Hey there everyone, Dr. Beth Westy here. Um, I am coming on a little bit late tonight. I'm a little bit of a night owl right now, just kidding. I had football and then I got my lashes done. I have people ask me this a lot, so since I've been getting my lashes done, no, these are not real. I have an excellent gal who does these for me because I'm not really that girly. I don't like to, uh, you know, spend a lot of time really. So spending some time every now and then to get my lashes done just makes my regular everyday life so much easier. And I, I really like them. I was shocked. I don't get my, I don't paint my nails. I keep my nails very short. I don't even wear jewelry. I don't even wear my wedding rings <laughs> or any of that. I'm not girly. Um, always been a tomboy. And this is the only thing that I've done consistently. I got fake nails like once, like I got acrylic nails once I think in high school and I bit them off the next day because I couldn't stand them, which I know is really bad for your nails. Anyway, so that's hence the, but I was like, I got to talk about this estrogen dominant stuff. I had so many questions on this and this is such an important topic for women. So if you caught my video yesterday where I talked about what estrogen dominance is, how it affects your body, your system, everything, this is sort of the part two to that. I'm still going to do another video on how to tell or testing and talk about that because that's a whole nother realm when you talk about getting your hormones tested not really a simple answer. But for right now, I want to focus on the estrogen dominance. Again, this is just um, and a continuance of everything we talked about yesterday. So a bunch of issues can happen from estrogen dominance. And then here are some things you can start to do, right? So in the 12 week program that I have where I work one on one with women um, and focusing on getting women different results for their health, for their body, you know, especially when it comes to weight loss, that can be a really frustrating point for a lot of, a lot of ladies, right? Um, it's, it's really frustrating to feel like you're trying to do all these things and then things maybe used to work for you or used to be beneficial and now nothing is working and nothing is responding the way that you expect. So I'm just going to dive right in here. Just dive right into estrogen dominance and some tactics, right? Now, these, these are, this isn't exclusive, right? But these are some places that you can start, start to research, start to look at. I am a huge proponent of women being advocates for their own health. Like figure out what's going on with you and figure out the best course of action. Because sometimes um, if you go in to see a practitioner of any kind, they're going to be able to help you with their capacity, meaning the tools that they have in their toolbox. If they don't have a tool in their toolbox, they can't help you with that, right? So, um, you know, it's it's one of those things that you learn, okay, I actually, you know, realize that not a lot of people know about this, that, or the other, right? Um, does that make sense, right? Like, if you go in to see your medical doctor, you know, they're not going to do acupuncture on you unless you see somebody who does acupuncture too, right? So it's, it's really important that you're looking at as many things as possible to help you with your health. And that also can help, you know, when you go in to see a provider of some kind, you are, you know, having a lot of information saying, hey, I've looked at this or this doesn't seem to match with what's going on with me, right? Um, anyway, so I do talk about when we talk about eating for your cycle, but it's one of the first things where I, for estrogen dominance that can be helpful. Um, eating for your cycle, this is, you know, chart, you know, estrogen, progesterone, it changes, you're different every week of the month. So shifting your nutrition for your internal, you know, body chemistry to match that can give you a totally different result. Um, that's what my book, The Female Fat Solution is based on. It talks in detail about how to eat for estrogen, how to eat for progesterone, um, and really get that balanced, right? You don't want to be balanced, even keel all month. That's not how our bodies are designed to be. They're designed to ebb and flow. So what helps keep this estrogen in check is when your progesterone is rocking at the point that it's supposed to. So rocking, right? You guys know what I mean? <laughs> Very technical words here. Very technical. Um, so this is what keeps the estrogen in check. But if that's not happening, then the estrogen can take over and be, and be too strong. And it can throw off a lot of those things that we talked about yesterday. Um, so overall, you know, eating cooling foods, eating warming foods. Again, this is more of an Eastern medicine mindset when I talk about nutrition for the hormones in the cycle. Um, I'm not going to get too into detail on that, although I, I kind of want to. But uh, again, we're going to focus on overall eating for estrogen here. The other thing too, just to focus on is getting enough protein and enough nutrient in your body. Protein is one of the number one nutrients I find that women are not getting enough of. And when you have your um, a hormone system that's not 
functioning correctly or things are off, it's very stressful, it's very depleting for the body. And one of the best ways to build up that um, stamina, endurance, and everything is to get enough protein. Um, also, estrogen is really important in terms of a lot of body systems. You know, it, it helps, you know, make sure your metabolism is running correctly. You know, it helps with lean muscle building. But if that's not functioning correctly, then you're not going to be building the muscle like you should. So making sure you're getting enough protein and enough nutrient does help support your system and having this function at the way that it should. Um, the second thing is to like detox that excess hormone. This is a very simple way of saying, you know, get rid of as much of that excess stuff as possible. The, this doesn't happen in one session. It doesn't happen even in, you know, 21 days, you know, or 30 days, you know, that would be great. <laughs> I mean, I have a 12 week program because it, it takes 12 weeks for a female hormone, fa a female hormone, you know, full cycle to come around. That's it's 12 weeks, you know, but it's, you know, your, I call it a phase. That 12 week program is like a phase, right? That's phase one. You need another 12 weeks to be phase two, right? And, and so on and so forth. So depending on how bad things are for your estrogen dominance, it, it could take multiple phases that you go through of working on this to really, really excrete that excess hormone that's in your body and in your system. So I talk about doing a fat cell flush or a fat cell cleanse, really focusing on eliminating that excess hormone that gets stored in your fat cells, flushing it out of your body. It gets excreted by your bowels. Um, that's the only way it exits your system. It's like you can't sweat it out, right? This is where women are like, I go to the gym and I'm kicking my butt and nothing's happening, da 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 da. Yeah, you can't just sweat out all the estrogen. That would be great, <laughs> but again, that's not how it works. <laughs> it has to get excreted by your bowels after it's metabolized by your liver. There are phases of detoxification, phase one and phase two of detoxification, all that stuff. So it has to go through a certain protocol before that even happens. So again, the reason I'm going through all this is to help women understand, hey, it's not me, right? It's not that you had that cookie last week that you can't lose weight. That's not how your body works. That would be dumb, you know, like that would be, ugh, right? It is about looking at the overall process and system and how well are things functioning. So flushing out that excess hormone, again, it gets stored in your fat cells, you get it out of your fat cells, it gets metabolized by your liver and then excreted by your bowels. That's the general, right, quick and dirty way of explaining how excess estrogen and toxins and things like that get moved out of your system. So, but these are important processes that have to happen. The last piece here um, is managing your stress. <sighs> yeah, so in terms of this, you know, I have a book on this, I've done a ton of videos on this, you know, warming and cooling. Um, I'm actually doing a TV segment on the Jason show tomorrow morning where I'll be going, talking about this more so you can tune in tomorrow morning <laughs> and, and listen about that, getting more protein. Going through this process is very, very key. And then, but this, if you're not doing this as well, it almost, you can be nailing this stuff and it's still not going to make the biggest impact that it could if you're not managing your stress levels. That's how important your stress levels are. Great, right? Yay. Yeah. The reason why stress is so important in this phase. Who's Jason? Oh, it's a, there's a local uh, show on, um, um, it's uh, like Fox 9. It's our Fox News channel um, in, in Minneapolis. Um, yeah, I'll post. I'll, I'll do. I'll live the, the whole process. I'll, I'll do it live so you guys will see it. But yeah, um, when we talk about managing stress, if you are not working on, if you're not working on your stress levels, it will negate all of this other stuff that you're doing. That's what's really frustrating about this. And some of this stuff is really hard. If you're really stressed out at work, how do you how do you manage that, right? It's you can't change like your work, right? Or oh, I have a big work project due at the end of the month, so this whole month is stressful because of this work project. Yeah, I get it. So it's doing everything you can to manage your stress around that. You know, making sure you're getting enough nutrients for your body, um, and really helping lower your cortisol levels as much as possible. 
because when they get too high, it's terrible. So managing stress, and again, if you guys want a video on any of these things specifically for me to dive into, I totally can. Just let me know what you're looking for more info on. Um, but overall, managing stress, you know, meditate and go for walks and all that exercise, all that good stuff, right? Eating healthy, great. Adaptogens are my favorite way, favorite, favorite way to help manage the stress. It's, it's amazing. They will literally bring those stress levels down. It doesn't stop it, right? Uh, because once stress starts to kick off in your body and system, it has this whole cascade of responses. It's like a sneeze. If you're gonna sneeze, you're gonna, you're gonna sneeze. But if you can take that down, it really mitigates the damage that the cortisol can have in the body. Now, besides that too, though, the important thing about getting that down is that if cortisol is too high, it will actually mess up your estrogen and progesterone levels here too. Yeah, yeah, that's the other really, really fun thing. Oh, so great. Just cause you're stressed, this makes this worse. Yep, yeah, and then when this gets worse, your body stores more of it in your fat cells. Yay, see that fun cycle? See how that goes around? Yeah, so even though this is listed last, you know, it should be almost first. You know, really manage that stress as much as possible. And it is it is one of the hardest things to do. It really, really is. So again, if you want me to do a whole video on managing stress and different things you can do, like you can be in charge of, um, I, I will do that. It's just, that's how important this is in terms of really working with estrogen dominance. Like I said, you can just n knock it out of the park on numbers one and two here. But if you're missing three completely, every day with those stress levels, you're starting over and starting over trying to get a hold of it. Yes. All right. I had some questions here. Let me go back and answer them. I said flush a good thing. Yes, it is. Um, yeah. And I'll, I can talk about that more in terms of doing a, a cleanse here, a detox and different types of detoxes and then what to do for, um, specifically when you're looking at hormones, how much protein a day? Excellent question. That will depend on what you need. So every body is different. What your body needs. If you're under a lot more stress, you're going to need more protein. Fun, fun fact, cortisol likes to take some of that protein and turn it into sugar and store it for you. Yay. So you have to have even more protein than what you'd normally be getting to combat that. So that's really fun, right? Yeah. But in terms of how much protein, um, so I'll put a comment below. I'll put in the comments below a link where you can schedule a call with me. And if you have any questions like this, like, hey, this is you know my height, my weight, what my goal is, or my activity level, how much should I start with, or what's a good goal for me for protein a day, more than happy to chat with you about that. Because it's different for everybody. For me personally, and I use myself as an example for all these things, um, I'm 6'2", which you can't tell on the Facebooks, um, but I'm, I'm really tall, like really tall. And I weigh about 190 or 195 right now. I'm in my fighting weight because I'm playing football. I play football for the Minnesota Vixen. Um, so we're in season, we're actually in our postseason. So I put on um, 15 or 20 pounds at the beginning of the year because I wanted to be heavier for the season, <sighs> which is work. <laughs> I gotta tell you, it's work to do for women. Um, so, so I look to get at least 180 grams of, you know, or 190 grams of protein a day. If I'm not meeting those numbers, I notice that after a few days that I don't have the same energy that I normally do. Um, so, but that, again, I'm in season, I'm, I'm in heavy competition. Uh, it's very aggressive sport, right? A lot of output, a lot of energy. And I'm, I'm just physically a big person. So that's how much protein that I'm getting. You may need something different. Somebody who's 5'2 is going to need a different amount of protein than somebody who's 6'2". So hopefully that makes sense. Um, but I can answer that better for you more one-on-one. -on -one. Dandelion tea, a good thing to detox the liver. Yes, dandelion tea does help to detox the liver. Um, that's more of a gentle sort of daily detox. I did a video last week about daily you know, detoxes and gentle detoxes. So that's a good thing to add in for a daily detox. When I talk about a fat cell flush, we're really focusing on getting the fat cells to release that excess hormone that goes through a fasting day, um, an intermittent fasting day. It's a whole process that targets the visceral fat where those uh, toxins and hormones are stored, releases it, it gets metabolized by the liver, which then gets flushed out through your bowels. So again, if you want more detail, detail on that too, I can, I, can, I, can, I love that stuff, right? There's just sometimes where 
you know, I'm like, should I talk about this? Cause it's kind of nerdy and I really like it. But people may be like, that's, I don't need to know all that. Just tell me what to do, right? Like, <laughs> but you tell me if you want me to do it, I will totally do it. Types of adaptogens, ooh, yes. Um, so I use a blend of adaptogens. I use a lot of different types. Uh, my favorites though for stuff like this, uh, managing stress in relation to hormones, ashwagandha is fantastic. Um, and especially for estrogen dominance, ashwagandha all day long. Um, holy basil, wolfberry, also some other great ones to add in. You can get them in um, teas, powders, capsules, things like that, liquid form. There's a lot of different ways you can get it. Um, so I usually get mine in a powdered form and I add it to my shakes or have it throughout the day. Um, yeah, just no, there's no wrong way to get it as long as you're getting it in. I mean, you can get it in the morning on an empty stomach to make sure that it starts the day lowering their cortisol levels because their cortisol is typically highest in the morning. Whew, bring it down right away. Just get it managed right away if you have a lot of stress in your life. Managing stress is the hardest. Stress level peaks a couple days before your period. Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. Stress levels, this can be the most stressful time for women because this is where progesterone typically is higher and it has a lot of... Uh, weighing effects on your body and system. It, it's really where, oh, so many different physiological things are happening in your body at this point, like the week before your period. It just is not, it's like not your normal self. Your digestive system is the slowest. Your mental focus is not at its peak. Um, your physical endurance and recovery is not at its peak. I don't want to say lowest, but it kind of is. Yeah, I don't, I just don't want to say it. Um, but again, there's things that you can manage. So I actually take supplements differently during this time, especially for me. So again, using myself as an example, I have a football game this Saturday. And then if we win, we go to the championships, which will be then in another two weeks from then. So I'm actually timing, okay, my cycle, when we have games, how do I make sure that my body is nourished enough, that I've got enough protein I need more calorie during this point too. If you're not getting enough calories, your body needs 300 to 500 more calories at least during this time than you do here. If you're not getting enough calorie, that will add to your stress levels. So keep that in mind. Um, but I'm timing my performance with my cycle to make sure that I'm adding in more supplements and things as I need because my recovery is different sometimes. My, re you know, how, um, how fast I turn around, it, it just changes. So those are all important things to kind of keep in mind. I think I got off on a little tangent there. Hopefully that makes sense. You <laughs> know that I play football, right? Which is so funny. So I was an athlete growing up, right? I played basketball from second grade on. I did softball. Volleyball was big for me in high school. And then I played, um, so I did volleyball, basketball, track in high school, three sport athlete. And then um, I got a scholarship to play in college. And then after in college, I actually got invited to play on two different professional teams, one in Australia and then one that went around Europe. And I declined that invitation to go to graduate school. So I was always an athlete, always competitive. And this opportunity came up last fall to play football. And I was like, well, I know nothing about football. So I've had to learn a lot. It's been really challenging for me, but I love it because it's a new fun venture and I've met a lot of amazing women and, and I love being around athletes. And um, yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been a great experience. So yeah, so I, I really like it. Plus it's, it's a very different sport right? Especially from, from volleyball. Like you're, it's not, it's volleyball is zero contact. You're across the net from somebody. Football, it's all contact. So yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. You love detoxes. Just need your mindset for it. The more nerdy stuff, the better. Yay. Okay. Sounds good. You love the nerdy stuff. Understanding more how to take better care of your body. Okay. Yeah. So I can do more of a in-depth on some of these things. Um, just how they work and how to go through it because it really is one of those things. If you can get this down, these are things that you can use. Uh, the thing I love, about, again, so the 12 week program that I have, I love, you know, the results women get. I love, you know, helping them and they're with their health in a way that they've never been helped before. Um, you know, I just was chatting with somebody today who said, you know what? She goes, since the last time I talked to her two weeks ago, she's down another five inches. 
five inches in two weeks. And she's like, honestly, I've never stuck with anything before. I just, I can't stop because I feel so good. This is amazing. And thank you so much for doing everything you do. And I was like, oh, that's so amazing. I love this. This is why I do what I do. But, but beyond that, you know, after that 12 weeks, I mean, these are things that you're going to be able to incorporate into your life from there on out, right? It, it's not like it's, oh, here's the program just to get you to eat healthy. No, it's about learning these processes for your body so that you can know and understand and realize and become more in tune with how your body functions to know, hmm, you know what? Holiday season comes around and ooh, you, it's like things just happen and you got really stressed out and you're like, ooh, my body's feeling sluggish or I'm noticing my weight's creeping up a little bit because of the stress I know exactly what to do. I'm gonna go through this, make sure I manage that stress, and I'm gonna get that excess stuff flushed out right away so it doesn't get out of control, so that three pounds doesn't turn into 20. You know? That's my favorite thing about my 12 week program is really teaching women so much more about their bodies and about nutrition and how to blend the two together. Yes. Um, you always wanted to play football at 50, now I'm not in shape. <laughs> it's never too late, Michelle. You can play. Um, and Lori, when's your program? I have programs kind of going all the time, Lori. So I can send you info if you'd like, um, about my, about the 12 week program that I have. Cause it really does. It, it's again, it is not just a, it's meal plans, grocery list resources, working with me, you know, closely one-on-one -on -one to make sure you're getting all these, you know, different processes. But again, it's not just a meal plan. It is really incorporating a lot of important physiological changes and tactics into your life. So Yes. Is it a program? Yes, it is. So that's the other thing is that it's tailored for each, per each person. Like if you travel a lot, we talk about how to do that. How do you meal prep? How do you come home at night and then, you know, get a good, a good healthy meal in? Um, you know, for some gals are like a nurses work the night shift. I'm a teacher. I barely have time to go to the bathroom during the day. How do I, how do I eat? You know, all these other things. There are ways to do it. It's just shifting, you know, not only how you're eating and the timing of it, but basically your mindset on preparing and getting your, your body the food and nutrition it needs. So yeah, it's really, really fun. All right, I got off on a tangent again, I feel like. But this was good, this was good information to go through. I will talk more about how to do hormone, or hormone testing, what to look for or what to you know, think about there, just the different things that are out there. Um, and then kind of how to go through some of these processes more in detail. Yay! Um, but yeah, I'll put a link below for those of you that want to chat more. Um, more than happy to answer any questions that you have. And um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. If you found this helpful, I would so love and appreciate if you shared this message with somebody else. Um, you can, you know, send them a message. You can, you know, tag them in the video. Just any way to let more women know this information because, you know, what and the knowledge is power in terms of women understanding more about how their bodies work and function and getting a better result. So that's what I'm really passionate about doing. So thank you for tuning in and for helping me share this message. All right, have a great night.